Welcome to A Photographer's Life. The channel that takes you behind the curtain into the world of professional architectural photography. Join us now for a special episode with some of America's premier architectural photographers. Today's broadcast is part one of a three-part question and answer meeting. This meeting was held by the Association of Independent Architectural Photographers, and the discussion is led by AIAP Director Alan Blakely. We hope you enjoy the show. If you do, please let us know by liking this episode and subscribing to this channel. Now, on with the show. Welcome. Norman and I have just been kind of chatting about about business in general and, and how things are going. So, um, Justin and Stephanie, I, I'm curious to know how your year is going so far. My year isn't really going to kick off in, for another like month or so yet, but as soon as it does, I'm completely buffed for the rest of the year. That's but great. It, it's, it's all, uh, <laughs> I, 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 that sounds horrible now that I just said it. I have specific <laughs> clients uh -huh. that really like a, a country club and a couple of builders and stuff, and they're in my base. Mm. each year so commercial real estate and stuff and then other people come in and i try to fit them in as i can but we have uh, the clients that i normally have like uh, five or six they have enough projects going through the year that'll keep me busy to cover all my costs and everything so anything else that comes in is an extra so i'm really lucky that way to that's, be able yeah. to pull to pull that off yeah that, that's wonderful justin what's your year looking like um so it was starting slow for me Okay. And I just had a number of jobs come in all at once uh, mm -hmm. per uh, remodeling company, um, a developer, um, another client, interior designer. So it's just kind of hit me all at once here. Um, they're not they're somewhat spread out now, mm -hmm. but um, so it, it was slow for me, January, February. I'm also a realtor, so I was taking time to try and develop that okay business as well um so I'm, I'm it's looking up though for me good That's you guys great. oh i'm sorry i didn't mean to interrupt did you guys find that because for me winter probably around october november it stops until may april may and then it just goes off again and goes the rest of the year do you guys run into that lull or is it just kind of like my area I've been busy year round. I think Norman, yeah, you have too. too. <laughs> I, uh, I, uh, I, when I, I dream about having a day off. Uh, <laughs> no, we, we stay busy pretty much year round. We okay. have for, for decades. So. Good for decades. you. That's awesome. Wow. Yeah, my area tends to get a little bit dead in the winter where everybody's working, but they don't need me for anything because they want to wait for the green to come back. Yeah. And yeah. Norman, I, I, you know, the two of us, I, I know that you and I, we, uh, we work well outside of our own geographic area, so uh, yeah, that, that I, I think that helps. has a lot to do with it. That we work coast to coast, and yeah, and that helps a lot. Well, I'm going to start out here because the the question I have is with regard to image licensing. I got Pixie on board, and I I've been using them for quite a while now, but I'm not finding any improvement in image. <laughs> The, the respect for image licensing in the market, um, even though people have been made aware that I'm going after, well, Pixie's going after them for uh, infringements. Is that a major problem for anybody else? Yeah, Norm. Yeah, yeah, we, we have, um, I use Pex, Pixie as well. And I probably have, um, I think I have 400 plus cases. Wow. So it's a lot. That's a lot, yeah. They, um, what I have also noticed is uh, with, with Pixie, and I don't know if you've ex experienced this, Alan, you know, they'll try and, and, and come to a, a settlement with somebody. Yeah. But if the person they're contacting does not respond after so many attempts, then Pixie says they can't resolve the issue. Mm -hmm. So um, I've taken uh, 60 of those cases and handed them off to my intellectual property uh, attorney. Okay. Because the infringement is, is uh, I mean, some people are actually taking our work and using it on their website. So it's so blatant um, that I, I'm going to go ahead and invest in doing that. Norman, what kind of infringement are you seeing the companies, the, the types of use that you mentioned website? Is it somebody advertising your architectural photos as their 
own image or uh, own prod projects that they are working on, like a builder, for example? Well, I've, I've had like a window company. Um, I, I've, I shot for an architect and he used a specific brand of windows and the company mm -hmm. knew it. And so they took the images from his website and used them in their advertising without a license. Wow. Yeah, so, I'd go uh, after that, yeah. Yeah, so it's it's been instances like that. Uh, the one, the one, thing that I, I expected to see a lot of uh, misuse of was for hospitality, because we do a lot of hotels. We shoot for uh, Marriott and Hilton. And those those clients have been really, really diligent with ma when ma maintaining their license. Sometimes, you know, you get on second and third party sites. Um, and I haven't had any problem with that. And that's what I was expecting the most of. I'm surprised that it, until I found Pixie, I had no idea how many people were using our you know, stealing our stuff. So and are you guys uh, registering your images like direct, right after a shoot with the copyright office? Is that part of your? We do it, we do it quarterly. Quarterly. Yeah. Pixie offers a a bulk registration service, and yeah, that just makes it so easy. Yeah, it's actually cheaper than if you if you do it yourself through yeah. the copyright office. Yeah. Wow. Yeah, I've I've got over four hundred cases as well, um, and there have been some pretty significant settlements pixie yeah. doesn't they're, they don't really strong arm people <laughs> and uh they will try to um you know they they email them and then they will will call them and and at that point like norma said at, at some point they just decide it's not worth their time and effort to pursue it any farther and you know you're then allowed to to go ahead and and do that um and i have people who will get the call from pixie and then they'll call me and say you know can you just waive this <laughs> what and no they, they, there's a <laughs> there's a contract in place and it's it's up to pixie whether or not they they let that go so um it, it, the whole copyright and infringement thing and then there's one more thing i wanted to bring up is that um instagram just this week announced that they're going to allow um product tagging within photographs which really kind of concerns me because some of the, the worst infringements like Norman was saying is for is for manufacturers who are using photographs that you know I've done for an architect or a builder and then a manufacturer gets a hold of it and is using it to to advertise their products and I just see Instagram having opened that door even wider so that's a We've had that problem with house house was the worst Exactly yeah yeah, yeah. The, the bottom line is they're making money off of our photos. That's the right. bottom line. It's very simple. Yeah, um, you realize that when you, if you join House or your client joins House, part of that fine print is that you own the pictures you're submitting, and you're giving them to House for to use in any manner they see fit. So, um, and a lot of people don't realize that. That's you know, right. yeah, I have nothing to do. I don't. I'm not on House, but that's a, yeah. But your clients, uh, but when you. But when you give your images to your clients, and so that's where I've had an issue in the past, is if you say, okay, uh, so one of my clients say his name's Dave, and I said, Dave, House is going to use these without reimbursing me, but he wants to use them because he gets work from House, so it's really a touchy subject, and I think House knows that, that we're not going to tell our clients, no, you can't have that, uh, those images on House, and some people might say, well, then charge them more if they're going to have them on House, so... So how's the headquarters down in San Diego or something? I drove by it one day and I'm thinking, I want to just go in there and have them a little we'll talk with these guys. I say, do you understand what's going on? And then ASMP isn't going to go after them either. They talked about it at one point, yeah. I think. Yeah. Um, I mean, ASMP has already kind of gone the rounds with Instagram, but um, uh, the house situation, uh, I've actually got several cases right now uh, that Pixie is pursuing against uh people who have posted on house what they've done is they've they've taken stuff from the original licensee so say if i did work for a builder he posted on house and then somebody else is then uh posting you know taking those and sharing them on their own um uh, page or something like that and though and that is an infringement that's that's outside of the house contract and uh pixie is actually pursuing those for me so does it cost money to be uh, have Pixie um, membership or anything? Well, they offer a, they if you if you mention that you're an, a member of AIP, I, I think you get a three month free membership. 
mm. just to try them out. Um, the same if ASMP and PP of A, they get it's the same thing. You get a three month free membership, but all you have to do is mention that. And and I think I pay, I think I pay thirty nine dollars a month. Is that is that what it is, Norman? For yeah, that sounds about right. Yeah. And it, and it allows you to have thirty thousand images in the database. Yeah. So uh, that's that's where I am with them. Yeah, and you can pay for a you can pay for extra and have more. I think I've got over thirty in there. Yeah. Yeah. You it's, a, it's, a, it. it's nice. They've recovered. Um, I, I don't know about you, Alan, but I mean they they've had some nice settlements for us last. Oh year. yeah. That, yeah. Uh, um, my very first recovery, you know, paid for several years of Pixie membership. <laughs> so. <laughs> yeah, it sure did. No, I recommend them. I really do. Yeah. The stock it, photography. It, they used to go after Corbis back in the day. Yeah. Getty would go after, but that's not happening much anymore. No. Yeah. So we'll take a look at that. Justin, can you do research on that? You and I talk talk to me about that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I'll uh, I'll write up a report. We can. Yeah. <laughs> um, kind of as an aside, I've got an article that I'm submitting to um, the AIA's magazine, Architect Magazine, um, as well as to the um, ASID and IIDA uh, newsletters, which deals with licensing and copyright. Um, I did this several years ago. The AIA published it. Um, it's since been buried in the archives. And so I'm, this is just kind of a refresher and the language is a little bit um, more friendly as far as explaining how this all works. But anyway, those will hopefully... Uh, the article will go out this coming week, and hopefully I'll see some publication within the next quarter. So hopefully that right. might help a little bit. <laughs> we'll see. Um, Rank the numbers. I'm going to also, uh, I mean, it'll go out to our, my all my media contacts, uh, which include, you know, trade journals and magazines and and uh, newspapers and that sort of thing. Um, I'm just hoping that it gets picked up by quite a few. So we'll see. Anybody? I have a question along these lines that you guys are talking about. Do you have policies and your terms and conditions related to social media usage, tagging other parties in the photographs, as you alluded to with the um, product tagging? I found that clients will tag the vendors and so forth um, in the, the images. Uh, and that's and they feel they get a benefit of having their work showcased on the manufacturers or suppliers websites. Um, one case there's a company arteriors that actually took the image and then has a way of embedding it on their own website. So they're advertising it now on their website from an Instagram post that my client displayed tagged arteriors arteriors then embedded it in their own website. So I'm wondering if you guys have like terms and conditions related to that or how you deal with that? I, I have, um, I use a real, I used to use a, a multi-page license agreement 20 years ago. And, and I had, I worked with an attorney and we got that down to one document and it, it's, it's very, it works for me, it, it, but it allows the, um, the original licensee to, to use the images on the website um, and then their social media and their product advertising um, for press, you know, I give them th those rights as well. Um, I, di I'm different than some other photographers. They'll license every year. My license for a client is is lifetime. So, um, you know, it, that and that works for me. So, that that's you know, some people have to they want to renew it every year. I, I found with a lot of clients that I I work with people now for you know 15, 20 years, that that became a, a problem. But um, anyway. To, to address your question, I let them use it for social media in the, I also have a line in there about um, third party use, which is what you're talking about. Mm -hmm. that's, a, that's a direct infringement and that's a violation of the license. So um, that's something you could pursue through someone like Pixie or an intellectual property council can address that as well, because what they're doing is they're using your image without a license. So I'd send them a bill. Yeah, I do. I do the same thing. And I just had one of these just just recently and uh, similar kind of situation where a manufacturer, um, you know, monetized um, a post <laughs> by making it something about themselves. And so I sent them a bill and I got a call the very next day. 
um, <laughs> and they paid the bill. So I think that's a continuing problem where then it becomes a third party usage, which is outside of the terms of the license. Yeah. That's what Welcome we all know. <laughs> As we all know, there's photographers out there that will say, oh yeah, you buy them, you can use, let other people use them. And that's why we're having this dialogue now. It's always the, uh, always the case, it's the uphill battle, but yeah. I have a phrase I put on the front page of my, my contract is also pretty short. So a front page and a back page, terms and conditions are almost all on the back page. But on the front, I have prominently down at the bottom, no third party usage without permission. And that usually takes care of it. Mm -hmm. um, not always, but at least they're, they're put on warning. And so I do get questions, you know, can we do this? Or uh, we have somebody else that's interested in the photo, so they automatically kind of send them. And I also don't put a time limit on it. But that's my background because I was in construction and did some design work was I knew architects and interior designers are going to use this stuff forever. There's no, there's no fashion involved particularly. So um, mm. they, they just need it. So I, I, you know, the money's not that good anyway. You know, if it was, <laughs> if it was an ever, oh, I mean, on, advertising <laughs> typically has a, has a time limit because of fashion and hairstyles. And so there's, and there's, and there's, they're spending more money on media anyway. So you have more leverage because there's more money involved. It seems like it should be the opposite, but it's just, you know, so that's the, that is standard, but for everything else, it doesn't seem to be. Well, when you mentioned that um, uh, about in perpetuity, unlimited amount in, in advertising, of course you can only go, you can go for a couple of years and that's it. But for architects and interior, design, interior designers, there, you know, there's no way you're going to have to renew it every year. They're going to just laugh at you and, and move oh, yeah. on to somebody else. Oh, yeah. But for ads, that's where you make your money on a buyout or something. So oh, yeah. that's a big difference. Oh, I mean, to be clear, I, I put in there no, no advertising, right? You know, I've got it. I just put in a list uh, and forgive me if, uh, because I'm just obviously late to the game, just in general, I'm waking up. Um, you know, social media marketing, um, PR, uh, RFPs, uh, contests, award submissions, and that. And I don't usually have advertising in there. Yeah, I don't. Yeah. I, I, if, uh, if a company is going to use it um, to advertise a product or, um, um, yeah, that, that's a different license. So I, I got the same thing. I've got... Um, you know, collateral use, trade brochures, sales ads, trade shows, website uh, presentations, employee magazines, blah blah. I'm yeah. happy. I'll, I'll send anybody this my license. I mean, you can you can use it clean from it. I, it doesn't matter to me. But it but it works. The the part I have in here that's I, I you know a client may not assign or transfer this agreement to any rights or any rights to any third party, including but not limited to clients, contractors, subcontractors, consultants, friends, and acquaintances. A lot of times a client. Yeah, a lot of times a client. Well, oh, I, you know, I shot their house. I'm going to give these to the homeowner. Yeah, I, I got oh, a yeah. problem with that if the homeowner's licensed. But then the homeowner takes your pictures and they're just, you know, the next thing they're all over the place. It, it's a, it turns into a quagmire. Um, and then the the I think the best line in this license: use of any of these images in any manner whatsoever constitutes acceptance of these terms. Oh, and, interesting. Yeah. So. Oh. If, uh, and that goes with every, this document is with, um, you know, every FTP upload we send. So it, it's part of their delivery. So if they use them in, if they use the picture for anything, they've accepted the terms of these licenses. So would, would you mind maybe posting that language on, on the Facebook group or something like that? Or sending yeah. it to me and I will, or. Uh... Yeah, I'll send it. I'll send it to you. Um, okay, Alan, there, then we get it from Alan. Yeah, there's a Plug there's Alan. a couple of things. Yeah, I can just uh, I can send that out as a, just an email blast. But there's there's yeah. a few things in there that I would like to add to mine. <laughs> so just yeah, yeah. That's that's a, right. Right. let me let me see if I got your email here, and I'll send it. I'm kind of kicking myself here that I hadn't even thought of that. It's so obvious. Mm -hmm. It doesn't even talk about money. You know, it's just you no, got to get a paper sooner or later. Yeah, Alan, give me your 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 email. I'm happy to share my contract too. In fact, the the, my basic contract with with is uh, is what I give to my business students oh. with a lot of notes on it. Uh, but I'm happy to send a sort of raw version of it. 
without, I think people here know the difference between an estimate and an invoice. At least, at least I hope you all do. So can I ask a question? Did Was there any talk about this Instagram thing? Was there talk about hows and how Instagram has been finally, they're trying to monetize all this free content and all that? Did you guys run over that already? Well, briefly, um, but we could certainly revisit it uh, further because we did touch on hows a little bit and what's going on with them and and the Instagram thing. And, I, and they're, they're both pretty unsettling to me. Well, I think that, uh, you know, the, the terms of, the terms that you um, sign, uh, you know, digitally sign when you use Facebook and Instagram, and for that matter, all these, mm -hmm. is the, you know, the, the company say, well, we own, we can do whatever we want with the content, we don't own the copyright, but, you know, we're, we can do it, we can sell it, we can do all that stuff. Now, they haven't done that, because, uh, they know how much trouble they would get into. So they put it in there to kind of future proof um, so that they could figure out a way to monetize it. Because I mean, you know, we're not the, we're the, we're the product, right? We're the way that they sell ads, all of us. That's why it's free. So it's a, it's a devil's bargain, but it's a bargain we've all agreed to. However, I think that this is a kind of halfway measure, this tagging of, um, and it and it goes along with what influencers do, right? And their influencers are branded, and and straight up branded a lot of it. And I think because there's they're not journalistic standards in the same way, so that people know. Um, and I think it comes. It's a part of. It's an indication of the other changes in the culture, like podcasts, which never had ads. Now podcasts are filled with ads read by the hosts. It's like old TV. <laughs> it's like TV from the 50s. <laughs> uh, if you ever watch Dick Cavett, uh, the early Dick Cavett's, he yeah. does ads from the desk, right? Yeah. So I think that they, they found this is a way for them to um, get, get some juice out of all this uh, free that they give us. So, I mean, it is what it is. I, I, there's nothing much we can do about it. I'm, I don't think there's complaints are going to be in order, but, um, you know, if they get complaints, they'll modify their algorithms, I imagine. But a lot of people are going to embrace this because they're going to make money. Uh, there is an attorney that I've been in touch with who um, is right now kind of exploring uh, the idea of a class action mm -hmm. lawsuit. Um, I'd like to see that move forward. So I'll keep you posted on that. It's it's kind of in the really early stages right now. But uh, well, this kind of... Yeah, this, this announcement from Instagram this week kind of reinforced that idea. So we'll see where that goes. Well, it'll make whatever they do more transparent. Mm -hmm. Because if nothing else, it'll bring the press onto it. And then the press will ex explain things. And then people who are not like us who pay attention to these things or who don't pay attention to these things will now go, what? what? <clears throat> and I think that, <clears throat> excuse me, you know, Instagram got in trouble a few years ago for... Um, using people's profile pictures to do ads. And that's what we were always afraid of because that's what that license says they could do. But boy, they had stepped over the line and then they stopped. So publicity brought on by lawsuits and complaints and, and hopefully the trade associations making noise. But I mean, you know, you're, we're not a trade association particularly, but any group of people, you know, who sort of band together and say, you know, if AIAP, you know, signs on and somehow becomes a kind of a sponsor, that yep. has, uh, that lends legitimacy to any, um, sure. any kind of complaint. Yeah, yeah. Um, I'm wondering, uh, do, you, do you guys uh, plan on having additional conversations with your clients about the tagging on Instagram? Or do you feel like you're, they have the, enough understanding of how things work that in your contract that's sufficient? Or how do you plan on communicating this? Because it seems like, again, you know, many clients, in my point of view that I deal with, may not understand this is, you know, not allowable or may want to do it because they feel like it provides them extra exposure. I haven't thought about it, to tell you the truth. I'm not sure how, how to handle it, quite honestly, because what I envision happening, um, and probably fairly soon, is that something I shot for an architect um, he's going to tag the product used in there. 
-hmm. And then that's going to be uh, seen by the manufacturer of the product because, you know, now they're tagged and they're going to reshare that. And all of a sudden it becomes something that they've derived value from. So, you know, my inclination is I'll send an invoice to whoever reshares it, but my goodness, that's a lot of things to keep track of. So I'm not really sure. It's well, the other thing is we, we can't burn the bridges with our client too. If our client's saying in the background saying, what's Papazian doing? He's kind of stirring it up. In this town in Portland, it's so competitive, they'll just move on. Well, they know that. I mean, Instagram has thought about all this in advance. They know about a lot of professional, uh, that uh, professional photographers count on Instagram because so many of the advertising agencies and photo editors cruise mm -hmm. it all the time. So they're right. fully, because we, you know, professional photographers lend legitimacy to all everybody else. And whether you like uh, influencers or not, and I, I don't, they also lend legitimacy to it because yeah. it's about eyeballs. It's about selling ads. Yeah. Or whatever they can do. But I, I think, again, without any knowledge, inside knowledge, that the change that was forced upon Instagram to change how the embedding worked, right? That you couldn't just, uh, they made it harder to do. Mm -hmm. and you, you had to give credit and all that. That helps lead up to where we're at now with this new, this new thing. This has been another episode of A Photographer's Life. If you've enjoyed this program, please let us know by liking this episode and subscribing to this channel. A Photographer's Life is brought to you by the Association of Independent Architectural Photographers. This episode is copyrighted, and may not be used in full or in part, without the written permission of the AIAP. Please join us again soon for another inside look at the world of professional architectural photography.